keynote session of PIMRC 2021 virtual conference. In the upcoming 6G, in the sub terahertz and even terahertz bands, we shall see drastic reduction in link distances. But this can be alleviated by introducing uh, antenna arrays that can contain thousands of antenna elements, allowing the transmission energy to be pointed only to the desired direction. The introduction of these extreme multi antenna devices raises an opportunity to use the radio signals not only to communications, but also to sensing and imaging. This calls for advanced signal processing methods, and today we shall hear about integrated sensing and communications by Dr. Wen Tong from Huawei. Dr. Wen Tong is the CTO of Huawei Wireless. He is the head of Huawei Wireless Research. In 2011, Dr. Tong was appointed the head of communications Techno technology lab at Huawei. Currently, he is Huawei 5G chief giantist and led Huawei's 10-year-long 5G wireless technologies research and development. Prior to joining Huawei in 2009, Dr. Tong was the Nortel Fellow and head of the Network Technology Lab at Nortel. He joined the Wireless Technology Labs at Bell Northern Research in 1995 in Canada. Dr. Tong is the industry-recognized leader in invention of advanced wireless technologies. Dr. Tong was elected as the Huawei Fellow and IEEE Fellow. He was the recipient of IEEE Communications Society Industry Innovation Award in 2014 and IEEE Communications Society Distinguished Industry Leader Award for pioneering technical uh, innovations in 5G mobile communications technology in 2018. He is also a recipient of the RA Fessenden Medal, and for the past three decades he had been pioneering fundamental technologies from 1G to 5G wireless and Wi-Fi, with more than 500 awarded uh, US patents. Dr. Tong is the Fellow of Canadian Academy of Engineering, and he serves as Board of Director of Wi-Fi Alliance. Dr. Tong, please, the, the floor is yours. 6G will integrate sensing with communication in a single system. Radio waves can be exploited to see the physical world beyond eyes. Such capability offers autonomous driving vehicles ultra-high resolution and accuracy in all weather conditions. What's more, high precision localization and gesture recognition will truly free our hands and make art creation anywhere, anytime. 6G will boast its native AI capability Deep Edge Architecture enables massive machine learning in a distributed and collaborated manner. Robots can thus harmoniously work and play with humans. 6G, the next horizon. Hello everyone. The title of my talk is Integrated Sensing and Communications. Sensing and Communications are two different technologies and they provide very different functions and purpose for the radio wave transmission. However, from recent progress on service and application in 6G, we see the trends and demands for the integration of sensing and communication. And it, be it becomes one of the pillar for 6G foundational technologies. In this talk, we present our view on integrated sensing and communications for 6G. Today, 6G is becoming a research hotspot for the wireless community. However, 6G is not just a simple upgrade of 5G. 6G wireless will go far beyond of communications. In this regard, 6G will be defined by six basic pillars. The first is the native AI. 6G network will natively integrate communications, computing, and sensing capabilities. A distributed machine learning architecture will be the key to deliver the AI service and application to anywhere at any time. Furthermore, 6G will revolutionize AI. The second is networked sensing. 6G communication system will integrate wireless sensing capability 
to explore physical world through radio wave, echo reflection, and scattering. It can provide high resolution sensing, localization, imaging, and environment reconstruction capabilities to improve communication performance and to support a broad range of network service scenarios, especially the AI. The third is extreme connectivity. 6G will provide universal high performance wireless communications and ultimate experience with the speed comparable to optical fibers. The fourth is integrated terrestrial and non-terrestrial networks. The fifth is native trustworthiness. The sixth is sustainability and the humanity good. In this picture, our vision of a 6G is a world of the connected intelligence. 5G is defined with the three basic capabilities, EMBB, URLC, and MMTC. Around these capabilities, a new network architecture and radio interface were designed with cutting-edge technologies and performance. In addition to further innovation around these three basic capabilities, 6G will integrate intelligence and sensing as a two new capabilities. In this way, 6G is not only a platform for connectivity between the physical world and the cyber world. 6G is also a platform for computing, a platform for sensing, a platform for automation of entire society. To make the connectivity fully intelligence and to deliver the intelligence service and application as well. The pyramid on this chart represents the vision and the definition of 6G. To the technical community, the representative key performance indicators for 6G are highlighted in this chart the peak speed, user data rate, latency, and sensing resolution, and the energy efficiency target are very challenging. These targets represent wireless technology supremacy, meaning with all the spectrum available that is reaching even terahertz, all the network infrastructure asset available that's the base station uh, grid. What is the ultimate wireless ability we can achieve? To achieve these targets, we need to invent new enabling wireless technologies. For the academia community, this is indeed the technology challenge for the next 10 years. In the following talk, we will focus on the sensing and communication. We will discuss sensing and 6G, sensing and communication, sensing and AI, sensing for machine, car, and robots, sensing and satellite, and sensing and spectrum. The first straightforward capability of sensing is to assist the communication. The sensing will explore much more detailed side information for communication channels and even to reconstruct the entire real-world environment for the optimization of the connectivity. Since the wireless communication is not just a simple point-to-point -point communication, it involves multiple devices and multiple base stations. Therefore, the sensing in this, in this case is not a simple radar model. We can explore the concept of a network sensing, collaborative sensing, 
by using multiple devices and the multiple base station to perform the sensing jointly. To be more specific, the sensing can be directional or bidirectional. They are operated under the mode of sensing before communication or sensing while communication. What we want to emphasize here is that the 6G the sensing shall be integrated with communication. That is, sensing and the communication use the same spectrum, same device, and same networks. The second capability of sensing is image-like uh, the service. For, for the physical world, for in this case for 6G, in addition to transmission, transmit the bits, we can receive and detect radio wave with advanced signal processing techniques. We can detect the object signaling parameters values such as location, velocity, moving trajectory. We can also to reconstruct the object image for the real-time environment uh, and learning and build on this AI uh, for AI service. Furthermore, we can analyze the spectrum spectrogram of objects. Sensing will be a perfect complementary for 6G network to deliver AI service. Sensing is the source of massive data for machine learning, and it is automatically built in with the single device, single base station, single frequency spectrum, and single air interface without the need of extra investment. This is a very easy to understand that we can simply say sensing data is a natural gateway to AI. From the end-to-end -end network architecture point of view, first of all, sensing appears at all the radio transceivers. On device side, 6G will have trillions of IoT devices and billions of smartphones, hundreds of millions of parts, each with several type of sensing functionality and several frequency bands. On the network side, 6G will have almost 100 million base stations and small cells, access node. That is the entire global network will have many sensing functions for sensing every city, every street, and every public space. The second aspect of sensing is to sense sensing is natively embedded into every capability of 6G radio access, such as machine learning functionality, connectivity functionality, even satellite non-terrestrial uh, functionality. The third aspect of the sensing is that sensing is natively linkage of the physical world and the cyber world. This means 6G is not beyond, uh, is, be is beyond the connectivity of the physical world and the cyber world. It is essentially the platform for fusion of a physical world and cyber world. The scope of sensing in 6G network is native and everywhere. In other words, 6 sensing is in fact a cross-sourcing of federated sensing from billions of devices. They form a continuous stream of information sources from physical world, biological world, and mother nature. The sensing including people, machine, robots, and the environment. The base station, the basic sensing data properties covers from parametric value, image and of objects, and the spectrogram of a material, and even biological data. In other words, the representation of a physical world on the radio wave lens. Let's get into 
the details of sensing assisted communication. This is a particular effective for millimeter wave uh, communications. We can use devices assisted networking and the network assisted device sensing to overcome the obstacles such as non on site sensing. As shown in this chart, the cooperative sensing and the communication will allow 6G network to see almost everywhere in the environment. The device can send the sensing information to the network so that the network can, uh, can synthesize the sensing result even for non on site case. Our ambition is to overcome and to remove the log jams for millimeter wave communication. Of course, the additional sensing information will be able to utilize to assist to enhance the communication performance. It is very effective in the case of a millimeter wave communication for the beam processing and management with a more sensing assisted side information. This can reduce or even eliminate the beam search, scanning overhead, and reduce the power consumption and extended battery life. In this chart, the UE in the black blocking shattering cannot communicate with the base station in this case, you, you will trigger side information, uh, side link sensing and communication to set up a data transmission where the other links, that is the D2D link, for example, a pad on a reconfigurable intelligence surface. Furthermore, integrated sensing and communication can have added value in addition to sensing assisted communication. For example, sensing of people and the car can assist, uh, can assist the autonomous driving to avoid the blind spot of autonomous driving car and the blind spot for the people as well. This is an example illustrated the basic sensing capability can enable and to support the service and the application. Here, we provide an example to apply massive MIMO base station to perform joint sensing. This is a typical integrated sensing and communication of a sub 10 gigahertz spectrum. We embed a high performance sensing waveform by using massive MIMO base station, we can compute high accuracy AOA for, uh, uh, to retrieve the location of the user and detect the location of the objects with a larger environment structures. The MIMO sensing can provide high resolution spatial channel metrics to improve the massive MIMO performance. Some of the Advanced digital signal processing algorithm can apply here, such as a Sage and Esprit. In addition, network the massive MIMO base station can provide a sensing service such as tornado forecasting and the disaster forecasting. For millimeter wave sensing, this is the golden sensing spectrum for high quality sensing for digital model of the real world. It is a four dimension, meaning it, it is a real time. It will be ultimate uh, digital map for the smart city, for the autonomous driving, for the real, uh, for the future factory, for the future shopping. The multiple base station and the multiple devices jointly to sense and to reconstruct the physical world by using line of sight millimeter wave beams and the reflection of the beams to reconstruct uh, the, the jointly.
there are some technical problems need to resolve due to the multipass reflection, such as the SLAM algorithm. More interesting feature for 6G is the satellite-based sensing. For the classical remote sensing satellite and the very low Earth orbit satellite constellation, we can leverage meter level of a terrain and the street of the city uh, to minimize the path loss and the, uh, uh, for the overall links, especially the possibility to fill up the coverage hole because the bird's eye view uh, and the ray tracing like capability to assist the millimeter wave beam alignment to the base station. Integrated sensing and communication will be very useful for the indoor short range communication, where we can uh, have a very rich reflection propagation and the complicated beam assertion. We can see the separation of a sensing and channels, uh, sensing of a channel and beam processing will integrate together uh, and optimize together. This, in this chart, we highlight the real-time joint sensing and communication must be integrated with, because the deterministic array may not align with the real-time beam. In terms of a research area of the wireless air interface, we listed the high-level topics for the integrated sensing and communications. So for SISO sensing, this is a wavelength dependent, the transmit of a fixed waveform of a multiple pulse reception interval uh, for ranging uh, Doppler imaging. MIMO sensing is a wave or it is a wavelength waveform agile, uh, capable is capable to simultaneously transmit of a multiple waveform across the frequency and polarization and the space as well. Network in sensing, uh, the, uh, the MIMO uh, sensing capability plus multiple views. We talk about the second big area for ISEC, integrated sensing and communication. That is to categorize the relationship of the brain and the sensing. From the brain perspective, the left-hand side side of the chart in the theory of a system one and system two is a very useful tool to help us uh, in AI uh, research. In this chart, we can characterize the system one and system two as a human behavior metrics. For the more technical metrics, in terms of speed, system one is slow, fast, system two is slow. In terms of operation, system one is effortless and automatic like a machine, while system two is on and off and require human attention and effort. In terms of information, system one is continuously learning process of the information from the real world, while system two can generate novelty. In terms of smartness, system one is unconsciously and system two is logical and smart. The relationship with a human sensing with the system one and two is highlighted on the right hand side of the chart. For system one, the related with sensing are pressure, hearing, vision, taste, smell, touch, vibration, thermal kinematics. For system two related sensing are uh, balancing and pain, etc. The native AI communication aims to uh, research the level of a human brain inspired learning and communication. Of course, this involves sensing. Here, we design a 
revolutionary framework based uh, on the Kahneman's system one and system two theory. The key area is the capability of system one uh, of each individual party can be modeled by deep learning after training. Such a model can be stored and shared with uh, all the communication parties in the cyber world before the communication. The real-time communication is only performed at the six system two level. To elaborate further, the new learning machine learning based communication paradigm consists of three parts. The first part is the channel inner inner channel communication. The second part is the local communication of the system one um, uh, models. The uh, in the other word, digital twin of the com co uh, communications. Uh, the third part is the system two communication at the semantic level. Well, it is in the, in fact the semantic outer channel communications. In this chart, I would like to discuss how to use the sensing data to train the machine learning model and the uh, and the related distributed learning or collaborated learning architecture. In this case, we can flexibly distribute the AI functions into device, the neural edge, and neural center. Depending on the uh, allocation scenarios and the requirements, one architecture is so-called federated learning. And in our case, is a federated sensing element. This is a, an approach to use many small models and a small computing effort to create high performance large models. The metrics for federated learning are two. The first is to keep the data privacy at the local. And the deep learning model is shared, but not the training data set or the sensing data set. This is a, a privacy representation zone uh, for the training data set or the sensing data set. That is the sensing and the data privacy. The second uh, is the lower carbon emission generated from the distributed computing of the learning process compared to the centralized uh, training in the superscalar data center. Overall, the sensing is critical for 6, uh, 6G enablers for machine, car, and robots. The integrated sensing and communication can be further integrated with the visual sensing. For local area 6G applications uh, with AI and deep learning, uh, these integrated capability will cover most, if not all the use, 6G user cases in the uh, local scenarios. The third area for 6G sensing is imaging capability. This is a new enabler for the mobile device. Here we list the basic limits for the wireless imaging. For the distance resolution limit, it follows the Kramer raw lower bound. For example, for 39 gigahertz with five gigahertz bandwidth, it is, the limit is a three centimeter. For 71 gigahertz with 5 gigahertz bandwidth, the limit is a 3 centimeter as well. However, for 275 gigahertz with 20 gigahertz bandwidth, the limit is 7.5 millimeter. Uh, for 1 terahertz with 50 gigahertz bandwidth, the limit is a 3 millimeter. For the image resolution limit, it follows the RBS lower limit. For in this case, 
for 39 gigahertz with a five uh, gigahertz uh, spectrum uh, is a uh, 4.7 millimeter for 71 uh, gigahertz with a five gigahertz this it is limit is 2.7 millimeter for 20 275 gigahertz and 20 gigahertz bandwidth the sensing uh, the Im imaging resolution is 0.1 millimeter for one terahertz with a 50 gigahertz bandwidth it, it they said the uh, upper limit is 0.2 millimeter next the spectrogram resolution limit it follows heisenberg limit for 39 gigahertz with 5 gigahertz bandwidth the limit is 2.4 megahertz for 71 gigahertz 5 gigahertz bandwidth the limit is 2.4 uh, megahertz for 270 uh, 5 gigahertz with 20 gigahertz bandwidth the limit is 9.6 megahertz for 1 terahertz and 50 uh, gigahertz bandwidth the limit is 24 megahertz as we can see the theoretical limits for different millimeter wave bands and the terahertz band uh, the good news is that we can we have a huge potential for technology development for sensing accuracy and resolution The sensing is highly dependent on the spectrum of the frequency and the bandwidth. For base station, the good sensing spectrum are for microwave micro base station is a six gigahertz or ten gigahertz. For micro base station is a twenty eight gigahertz or thirty nine gigahertz, sixty six gigahertz and seven six seventy one gigahertz. For satellite is 39 gigahertz or 50 gigahertz in addition the potential opportunity for sensing spectrum for use devices are 252 gigahertz to 275 gigahertz with 23 gigahertz bandwidth or 275 gigahertz to 296 gigahertz with 21 gigahertz bandwidth or even higher 306 gigahertz 300 to 313 gigahertz with 7 gigahertz bandwidth or 318 gigahertz to 333 gigahertz with 15 gigahertz bandwidth or 356 gigahertz to 450 gigahertz with 94 gigahertz bandwidth as we can see a large amount of consecutive chunk of spectrum available for sensing purpose primarily. The sensing only capability for the smartphone and IOT devices, variables, and even cyborg can use the millimeter wave and the sub terahertz spectrum. For the smartphone and the potential sensing, the frequency are uh, 6 gigahertz 10 gigahertz 20 gigahertz 8 gigahertz 39 gigahertz 40 gigahertz 50 gigahertz 66 gigahertz 71 gigahertz for the variables the potential sensing frequency are 66 gigahertz 71 gigahertz 252 gigahertz to 250 uh, 75 gigahertz 275 gigahertz to 296 gigahertz 206 gigahertz to 213 gigahertz 213 giga 18 gigahertz to 333 gigahertz even further for the cyborg the potential sensing frequency are 252 gigahertz to 275 gigahertz 275 gigahertz to 296 gigahertz 306 gigahertz to 313 gigahertz, 318 gigahertz to 333 gigahertz, 356 gigahertz to 450 gigahertz. 
as a showcase, we present the scenario of uh, subparameters is a imaging and sensing uh, imaging sensing kind of applications. One of the technology applied to this scenario is to use the sub terahertz smartphone to scan the object and to use the synthetic aperture algorithm to reconstruct the image for larger than device size object and yet with a millimeter wave, millimeter level of resolution. As we talked before, sensing will be enabled and immersed with all 6G capabilities. For the new EMBB at the link level of speed, so for example, peak data rate is 1 terabits per second. But the network throughput is uh, uh, in 6G is 100,000 times uh, higher than 5G. Uh, and uh, the new URLC the air link latency is 0.1 millisecond, the jitter is 0 0.01 millisecond. The network reliability is 99.99999. The new M -E uh, MMTC, the link speed is 100 megabits per second. The network capability is, uh, capacity is uh, 10 million per uh, links per square kilometers. For the new sensing, the position accuracy is a five centimeter, uh, 50 centimeter outdoor everywhere and one centimeter indoor everywhere. And the image resolution is one to three uh, millimeters. Finally, for the AI capability, the learning is supported through the design of a new EMBB and the new sensing and the inferencing is supported through the design of the URLC and the new MMC. We put the collection of a typical 60 device sensing capability uh, into this picture. They are locked. These are the location capability, imaging capability, and the spectrogram capability. Because of a different frequency and the different bands for the spectrum can be used for sensing, each 60 device can have different sensing resolutions and the sensing accuracy. In summary, in this talk, we covered 6G and sensing, communication and sensing, AI and sensing, machine, car, robots and sensing, and spectrum and sensing, satellite and sensing. Sensing by using wireless, wireless network is a game changer for 6G. We can natively integrate the sensing signal into the radio transmission wave for every 6G base station every 6G device, the radio transmission at wider bandwidth and smaller wavelengths can provide much higher resolution in real time and for the, um, for the environment of the entire network. Even so, at the device side, we can use the terahertz technology to scan and retrieve the material detection image for many new applications. Therefore, 6G is a network 
of a census. This is a cross sensing and a federated sensing for billions of billions. With that, I conclude my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Tong, for, for the very inspirational talk about sensing in a communication system using uh, radio waves. Um, there are a few questions I would like to ask uh, while we wait uh, for for audience to, to send their questions. First of all, um, if you think about uh, a typical access point, and you were mentioning that uh, we can achieve at one terahertz center frequency with 50 gigahertz bandwidth, we can uh, reach uh, imaging or sensing resolution of one, one to three millimeters. Now, how much is this related to frequency, bandwidth, and then how many antennas would you expect to see in this kind of uh, sensing application to reach such high numbers? or low numbers in, in, in resolution. We cannot hear you. We cannot hear you. Uh, thanks for the question. Sorry, I got a mute. Can you hear me now? Yes. OK, yeah. So um, for uh, this early study, uh, it, it is a, a single transmit and single receive uh, uh, type of uh, uh, accuracy, I mean the millimeter uh, wave level. Um, and because in the higher bands, uh, the separation of transmit and receive of uh, uh, relatively easy done uh, by separate you know the isolation so so that's basic what uh, what what was was what was demonstrated is uh, is a, a kind of a full duplex receiver always on where you do this thing so the resolution is depend on the uh, the uh, the wavelengths and the bandwidth as well so there are, uh, uh, in one of the chart I didn't uh, just show the theoretical limit, which is very, uh, very, very fine. But uh, uh, in the in the reality, and there is a there's an algorithm involved, uh, especially the reconstruction algorithm involved. Uh, I think it's a millimeter level three. Three millimeter. That so far we can see we, we got from around two hundred gigahertz that level. All right, um, but in a typical application in one terahertz, uh, how many antennas do you foresee to have in a user device or in uh, in an access point? Oh, uh, this this terahertz level so far. Uh, it will be mostly in the in the device uh, of a handset. Uh, uh, the depend on if you do the silicon design. Uh, well, I I still have a doubt with uh, like several thousands or ten thousands um, antenna element. Uh, although the form factor of the antenna, uh, you know, the, the antenna is not a problem. Uh, but there, uh, there is, um, uh, you know, the, the circuit uh, design and all the other things. Uh, I don't, I still have problem to go like more than hundreds of gigahertz in terms of uh, in the macro base station. That that uh, probably not feasible. But uh, uh, the indoor or small cell that uh, that could be done uh, in okay. less than hundred meter. Yeah. Okay, um, I will take now uh, one question from the audience. Mehdi Benis asks, um, first of all, congratulations for your nice talk. Isaac vision is interesting. Uh, can you point out one theory to enable simultaneous communication and sensing and not orthogonally allocating sensing and communication resources, uh, which could be what ends up being done in 3GPP eventually, but is there something more uh, advanced than orthogonally 
allocating resources for these two different functions. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, also, gonna allocation is a is an easy design that uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm pre, uh, you know it will be feasible to do that. But if it is not that case, uh, let's say OFDM is a one of the waveform you can do sensing and the uh, uh, transmission of the data as well. Uh, that means when it, with the same waveform uh, you can can be dual used. Uh, it depends on uh, probably this this simultaneous is a is a bit uh, 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 you know uh, maybe I. I uh, I, I got some uh, mess up in this. The key of integration is same device, same spectrum, same network, same uh, base station, rather than as classical we do with a separate radar to different frequency band and then get different transmitter receiver. So that is not integration. So the integration here is loosely, let's say that way. Uh, that doesn't prevent you to do also gonna resource allocation of the uh, sensing and uh, communication, uh, uh, which are optimized with different waveform. But there are indeed there are some waveform that uh, could be uh, uh, performs both well, uh, you know, uh, very well both for sensing and communication. There are there are okay. few. Yeah. So some waveforms would could be. Could used be to provide the both functions at the same time. Yeah, but maybe I should cl clarify that by integration, I mean, say, yeah. uh, yes, yes, know, yeah. uh, same stance. Um, yeah. Now you talked about the, the possible uh, use cases also for sensing. Um, it obviously always boils down to money. And uh, what, what, which vertical do you expect the first? adopt sensing application? Is it cars, industries, uh, media? What type of uh, applications are the first one to adopt uh, sensing capabilities? Yeah, uh, things like, I think car already adopt a sense, sensing. So typically they have already there are some, uh, at the, 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 the basic car has some 60 sensors at, in some of the, but they are not integrated. That's my point. Uh, they they are very separated and they maybe they uh, you know do different function. Uh, in terms of uh, device, uh, the, the industry uh, future factory, uh, this this probably the uh, I understand many many uh, you know many work on that. It in uh, leads to. They will have uh, some of our device in the robots or in the in the future factory that carry out full of uh, other sensors as well. Uh, but but then, if uh, they perform some function, can be uh, equivalent uh, on the radio waveform. Then you could uh, this is a unification to do this. That's uh, a, another way you 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 look at integrated sensing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure that the the big part is a uh, the lack of research is a medical part. Uh, it could be a, a very useful, uh, even for the consumer market. But uh, uh, but I understand there was a lot of uh, actually difficulties to good can, can have a good um, uh, you know uh, get the so send radio wave sensing to get a good medical data. Yeah, okay. Um, AI is often referred to as an uh, inherent part of the 6G, right? Yeah. Now, what about sensing an AI in in really fast, dynamic environment? Um, you talk about distributed and uh, federated learning. Now, how far are we in terms of real-time performance, for instance, if we have for instance, automotive sector, cars coming into a cross section and uh, you need to AI do the, the, the decision real fast and then mm. the information is basically old pretty soon. So how far are we in this, this domain in real-time AI in these extremely dynamic environments? Yeah, 
if you have a very good model, but then there's a, of course, there are big, uh, there's a way, a big problem for inferencing uh, because those good model tends to be gigantic. Uh, so, uh, and it depends on the progress of uh, computing. If you need uh, some uh, supercomputer to compute that, uh, that will cause latency because you, you need to somewhere in the network. But if he, he, he uh, I mean, in terms of real time, uh, um, the on the problem side is most uh, inferencing uh, computing. Yeah. But in terms of learning, yeah, that's another one. Learning always slow, and I don't know how to get a, a quick learning. Um, but federated learning can obviously can speed up. Uh, the data uh, collection side part, and then if you okay. if you yeah if you naturally have all this sensing, so you the the the, the source of the data is continuous once the radio is on. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is a related question to Mehdi's question by Roger Hoffel. Are you proposing orthogonal or non-orthogonal frequency allocation for this uh, sensing and communication uh, approach? Not sure. Uh, <laughs> it, it seems like both can be done, but uh, there will right. be a research work. Yeah. All right, we are coming to an end. Um, I have a little bit more speculative question as a last question on my side. Uh, given that we have the artificial intelligence uh, uh, in 6G, the user collaboration and, and, and sensing. So we can, in essence, see into the future, right? Now, how far into the future we can see? What is your estimation? I think AI is progressing f a lot faster than we expected. But their, their progress so far is based on the brutal force computing and excessive large of the data sets. So that's where, that's that's good or that's bad as well. So, um, because the computing is always, always uh, uh, you know, cause the issue of a cost and the power consumption, you know, uh, carbon emission and all this. Uh, and just, uh, uh, that, that rate is not sustainable, uh, but, uh, uh, yeah, the data set is another problem that uh, uh, often collect the data. It's related to the privacy and all this. Thing. Uh, thank you I, very I'm much. Op, uh, I am op, 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 optimistic. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah well, that's good to hear. Um, thank you very much, Dr. Tong. Uh, I believe it's time to, to end now. We have uh, uh, from the same studio the award ceremony as well as the announcement or, or address of the next year's PIMRC coming up in a few minutes. So I need to get out of their way <laughs> and uh, leave, let the, the next speakers and the next session shares to, to join the studio. So Dr. Tong, very much thank you for, for, for giving us the keynote and joining us today. And for all the audience, uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, we will end this uh, keynote session now. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye.